or click on the link in the Zoom. And now let's close our eyes and center ourselves before we enter worship together. Send out your light and your truth.
God be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel. Now therefore revere Yahweh and serve God in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve Yahweh. Now, if you are unwilling to serve Yahweh, choose this day whom you will serve, and whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve Yahweh. Then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other gods. For it is Yahweh, our God, who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. God protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And Yahweh drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve Yahweh, who is our God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living God sent me, and I live because of God, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the human one ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by God. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon, Pe Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of Jesus Christ. God, source of all being, incarnate word, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? The disciples have their questions. They have their doubts. Friends, we have reached the end of chapter 6 of John's Gospel. This is the fifth week in a row that our lectionary, the schedule of readings that our church follows, has been moving us through week by week through the entirety of the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Today, the passage comes from the very end of that sixth chapter. We began five weeks ago with the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 in the wilderness. We've heard after that the grumbling of the religious leaders who criticized Jesus, complained to them because Jesus took that miracle of the feeding the 5,000 and he used it to teach his followers who he was, what his identity was, what they had experienced through faith and through life. They heard about how Jesus is the bread of life, that he's like the manna in the wilderness, which is from the Old Testament story of when Moses and the Israelites finally were freed from Egypt, but then they were to wander in the wilderness for an entire generation. And they were hungry and God provided manna that rained down from heaven. And now Jesus has said, I am like that manna, only I'm more than it. Last week, we heard about how Jesus literally described that when you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you will have eternal life. 
what we interpret to be a teaching about what we today practice as the Eucharist, the Holy Communion. We've had some complainers who came from the religious authorities, but now the group that is raising their doubts and questions is Jesus' own inner circle, the disciples that have been following him and listening to him, watching the signs. They're the very people who have received the bread of life through the feeding miracle earlier in the story. And it's understandable that they have their doubts and their questions. Jesus teaching about eating flesh and drinking blood could have, interpreters think, amounted to one thinking of cannibalism. And that of course was forbidden in Jewish tradition. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? I think there's another layer though, to the doubts and the questions that are raised by Jesus's followers, because we too are people as followers of Christ who have our doubts and our questions too. Past two weeks, Diana and I have been co-leading uh, a class for newcomers. There's a few of you here who've been participating. Um, and perhaps others of you are on Zoom right now. One of the things we did last week was look at a path of discipleship. Now, there are many models that posit how we journey through our lives of faith. And there's no one-size-fits-all model, and it's not linear necessarily for each of us, but we identified four different modes of our faith orientation. And the second to last mode is called the searching mode. When we have doubts and questions and our orientation is in working through those doubts and questions, maybe on the other side of it coming out, having reconciled our doubts and our faith. We think of doubts in our faith life today, the easiest ones that come to mind are matters of our social order, moral dilemmas, what it means to be an ethical Christian, living with our gospel values, informing the way we relate to our society. A little girl feels called to lead prayer at her home church, but then is told that only boys can do that in our tradition. Someone has woken up the injustices that surround them. They believe, they come to believe that God truly is on the side of the oppressed and the marginalized. And yet they don't understand why everyone around them doesn't share the same urgency for making the world better. These are examples of some ethical faith-based dilemmas that some of us can encounter. There are doubts and questions that we people of faith have at a very basic level of what our faith is all about. Perhaps someone who has been a lifelong Episcopalian, attended church their entire lives, and arrives at some point when they realize, I have no idea how to pray on my own. I hear others talking about this idea of having a prayer practice. Prayer for me is showing up on Sunday, but how do I even begin Monday through Saturday? And after all, does prayer really even make a difference? There's the poignant moments of doubts, real serious questioning that happens, especially when ourselves or someone we love is diagnosed with a serious illness. We think, how can this happen when we have been taught to believe that everything happens for a reason and that if we follow the rules and we're good people, then good things will come as a result. We bring our whole selves, our doubts, and our questions to our life and faith. And according to John's gospel here in the sixth chapter, Jesus met the doubts and the questions head on. 
He perceived that they had the doubts and the questions, and he asked, are you offended by this? Then just wait. Just wait for what's to come. Jesus met the doubts of the disciples, but he invited them to make a choice, to make a choice to keep going, to keep following me. Faith involves making decisions. Day by day is a new opportunity to either move toward or away from God's grace. See, there's a change that acts that is asked of us, a change. We believe that grace is on offer through Christ, that we're invited to follow, but we have a choice to either accept and receive and choose the life that Jesus says is eternal. But what John's gospel teaches here is that we don't do this by ourselves. We do it in community. We're not alone. And as John's sixth chapter makes clear, one way that we're strengthened in doing this is by coming to this table to be fed. What does all this tell us about who we are? It tells me that I'm someone in need of saving that we, humanity, with all of the evil that we have wrought upon one another, are people who need salvation. And what these texts say about God is that God is the one who offers that salvation through Christ. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? So after Jesus responds to their doubts and questions, many, many, John says, many of them turned away and could no longer follow. So Jesus asked the, the inner group of the 12, do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus responded to the disciples' doubts and questions, and Jesus meets our doubts and our questions too, my friends. Let me hasten to add that there is no one-size-fits-all answer to doubts and questions. But one thing I know for certain from experience is that we have to bring them and we have to move through them. We cannot ignore or go around them because they tend to resurface over and over again until we confront them. The little girl who felt called to lead prayer in her church, perhaps wandered for quite a while, but later in life discovered an another church where her gifts for leadership were embraced and celebrated and welcomed. A person socialized as white who has woken up to their privilege, learns about the intersecting impressions of the experience of being a person of color in the United States. They commit to allyship to deep listening and to not staying silent when other white people around them say something racist. And that person who's attended church their entire lives, they decide to make an appointment to meet with their priest and they talk about prayer life. They sign up for a class that, oh, I've heard these announcements time after time after again at my church, but I've never signed up for one of those classes, but I'm going to do it this time. Weeks later, after struggling, but committing to a daily practice, they find that their faith is alive in such a way that they've never experienced before. And that person who's 
either facing a diagnosis themselves or whose loved one has, listens to another friend who's Christian offer support. And it registers with them when, when the friend says, you know, there simply is no adequate thing to say. And there's no adequate theological teaching for why suffering exists. But this, we believe as Christians. We follow one who knows firsthand what suffering is. And when we are suffering, we're not doing it alone. Jesus meets our doubts and our questions day by day. We can't go around them. We can't ignore them. We have to bring them here to the pews, to the Zoom screen, to this table, to Diana and me, it would be our privilege, to one another. This teaching is difficult, but can you accept it? Amen. Please stand if you're able to join me in this affirmation of faith in the words of the ancient church. We believe in three divine persons and one God. We believe in the creator, the almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one savior, Jesus Christ, eternally begotten of the creator, God from God, light from light true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the creator. Through Christ, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, the only begotten came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate suffered, died, and was buried. But on the third day rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures, then ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the creator. One day Christ will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and God's reign will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier, the giver of life, who proceeds from the creator and who with the creator and the begotten is worshiped and glorified. Spirit has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. For the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. For all those on our parish prayer list in need of healing in mind, body, spirit, or relationship. We pray for those visiting St. Margaret's today and for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God that they may find and be found by God. We pray for all the departed, especially those to us, those known to us who have recently died.
We pray for Ron's friend, Jason, who has been hospitalized with various mysterious conditions for nearly a week. We pray for Dan Sheen, Sheeran, who is, in, is on hospice and his family. We continue praying for Isabel's daughter, Gwen, safe travel home tonight. We pray for the soul of Ferris Wells, uncle of Shemba Payne, who passed away in Granada this week. May light perpetual shine upon him. We pray for all students, parents, staff, and faculty as we embark on a new school year. We pray Thanksgiving for Luna and Rufus. We pray for the people of Afghanistan, for those who are attempting to leave and for those who are currently suffering because they are left behind. We pray for the soul of Wanda Payne who died this week in comfort for the Payne family. We pray for Thurston Briscoe, who died this week. May he rest in peace. We pray for continued healing and peace for the family, for, for Adelie's family, as they grieve the passing of their uncle. We pray for safety for all as the Delta variant continues to spread. For these and all the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts, we commend them to you, O oh God. And we pray you would hasten the coming of your reign and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your word in glorious majesty, through Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Peace, everyone. Somewhere. Is it this one? Peace, everybody. We're now transitioning to the liturgy of the table. And I want to let everyone know that everyone is welcome to receive the bread of communion here at the table. If you prefer a gluten-free wafer, let the priest know when you come up to receive. People online may pray the prayer of spiritual communion that's found in our bulletins. If for any reason you do not wish to, re to re um, receive the host, you're invited to come forward to receive a blessing from either Richard or me. And now before we lay the table for our meal, we pause to offer something of the abundant, to, to give offer back something of the abundance that God has given to us. If you're visiting today, Please feel under no obligation to give. However, for anyone who chooses to give, please know that your generosity supports our mission here at St. Margaret's. 
And that mission is to proclaim gospel justice in a broken world, to serve others, including our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness, and sustaining our diverse and inclusive worshiping community. Uh, now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, amazing grace, so fast and yet so free. The child of God, the righteous one, is crucified for me. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed, amazing grace, amazing grace, so vast and yet so free, the child of God, the righteous one, is crucified for me. stand as you're able. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Most High, our God. O oh God of mystery and promise, you invite us to discover you in the intimate places of ourselves and our lives. You invite us to discover you within the complexities of our humanity, in passionate and tender loving, in struggle and pain, in confusion and unknowing, in flashes of insight and wisdom. You also call us beyond ourselves, the places of imagination, beyond the silent stars and the deep rhythms of the ocean, in the unending cycles of day and night, seasons of life and death. 
So this day with angels and archangels, with saints and ancestors, with the seas and earth and sky, with animals and birds, with our friends and those unknown to us, with all creation, we join in the song of your unending glory. you that in Jesus you have revealed yourself to us, making known the wonder and richness of our humanity. We give you thanks for his self-giving love, his healing touch, his vulnerability and gentleness, for the sacrifice that triumphs over sin and death and makes all things new. Before he gave up his life for us, Jesus shared himself his flesh and his blood with his friends. Jesus took bread, gave thanks for it, and gave it to them saying, Do, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. So too, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks for it, and gave it to them saying, this is my blood poured out for you, you. Do this to remember me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come now, Spirit of God, upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these bodily things, make us like Christ, one body food for the world, one blood poured out for the life of all. Touch us with your gentle creativity and fire us with the longing for the new age of justice and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. With Christ, through Christ, and in Christ, be you, O Creator, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory forever. Amen. And now let us pray together an adaptation of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, mother, father, come. For yours is the power and glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. I'll share the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived, died, and rose again for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you are able. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth from the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Now we come for a time of announcements. Hi, good morning. Um, I am, can you hear me? I am Heidi Mayer. And uh, I am your vestry representative. So the vestry is the sort of the board of directors of a church. And so if you're, if you're new or not even so new, uh, we welcome you. Thank you so much for being here on a sort of a cloudy day. And if you are new, we uh, encourage you to fill out these connect cards. They're outside of the pew. Let us know who you are. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can put it in the card or come talk to me. Uh, other vestry, Mike, 
Armstrong is there at the back. Um, we're so glad you're here. And I just want to say a special thank you to the music today. We have our singers back. It's so good to see you up there. And I don't know about you, but that uh, rendition of Amazing Grace was just amazing. So thank you. It was beautiful. Um, welcome. I'd like to give a last plug for the last in our summer series on how to pray and the use of inclusive language. Beginning at 1230, you can join us on Zoom and join Sister Ellen Francis, who will walk us through the St. Helena breviary. Uh, so I hope you'll join us. If you're not able to get home, you can come upstairs where Richard and I will be uh, join the Zoom conference up there. So please join us at 12.30 for our last of the summer series on how to pray to God using inclusive and expansive language. Thank you. And the blessing of God Almighty, source of all being, incarnate word and Holy Spirit, be with you all and remain with you forever. Amen.
go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.